Hey guys, today I have a book review, kinda. It's more like a book chat, coffee chat, in my case, tea. I just read this book, um, let's see who it's by, I don't even know. The Dark Lake, Sarah Bailey. I'm so thankful that her name is easy to say. Um, and it made me do a lot of thinking. When I read, because I'm an author, um, I generally read from an author point of view. You know, I pay attention to things like pacing and plot line and character arcs and um, all that. And I tend to like to read genres where I'm not writing in because I don't want to like accidentally sort of copy. But I'm always reading different things and that's because I write multi-genre. So my gig is I want to read multi-genre so that I'm kind of well-versed in all genres, what people are up to or whatever. This book is a little older. It's a 2017 book of the month. Um, but hey, you know, I'm behind on reading. I'm ahead on writing, behind on reading. This is no shock. This book, I think it's a debut. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's a debut. Uh, da -da. Yes, it is a debut. For a debut, this is a fantastic book. I would give it four stars, but understand this, I'm a very easy reviewer. Again, I look at everything from the author's point of view. I think your average reader who's got a little bit more critical eye and isn't me might say three, might say three and a half. Um, and there are some reasons for that. Let's start negative, that way we can end on a positive note. My big issue with this book, which is a thriller, um, and it is about a woman um, who is a drama teacher in a small town who has come back to this town and, um, you know, to teach, but has left after a scandal at another school, um, sort of out more in the city, out in the world. She's come back to her hometown and become a drama teacher. And she is found the night after a big remake of Romeo and Juliet, a play that she directed dead in the lake, surrounded by roses. Um, the lead detective is, I won't give spoilers with this, I'm just gonna give the basic plot, which you could read on the blurb anyway. Um, the lead detective is, she knew her in high school, so they were former peers, and this is, you know, 15 years later, 10 years later, actually, I think. So these people are like late 20s. I think the lead detective is 28. Um, and she knew, the dead woman in high school who was a very mysterious sort of, we all knew someone like this in high school, the beautiful yet sort of sullen, quiet, like artistic, mysterious girl. Um, I know the one in my high school, her name was Jessica. She fascinated me. I just thought she was the coolest person ever, but she was very mysterious. Um, and, and I think every school you can kind of name that girl, you know, everyone wanted to be her friend. Um, but she didn't really get close to anyone. At least that was what my, the girl that reminds me of the main, uh, of the dead girl in this book, her name, uh, her name is Rose in this book, but it was Jessica in my high school. Either way, this girl is found dead, in, or woman, is found dead in a lake. And it is Gemma, who is the detective, her job to solve this murder. Now, of course, Gemma has secret, like all good, good thriller with a, detective tropes do. She has her own secrets and her own connections to the actual woman who died. Now, most people don't know how closely entwined they are. And because of that, you know, I'm actually going to start with a positive. I can't help it. It's just me. The characterization is amazing. That's the best thing about this book, which for me is a little odd for a thriller. With me, usually a thriller, suspense, sort of mystery, detective, whodunit type book. Um, characters aren't where it's really strong, where it's really strong is the plot, the twists, all of that. I don't think that the twists are particularly strong in this book, but I do think the characters are. They are deep, they are rich, they have secrets, and sort of the twists come from those secrets more than the actual whodunit. Um, so for that reason, I loved this book. I thought the characters were so well done and I think very relatable. Like I said, you feel like you could name that girl, that guy, that whatever from high school in your own high school class very relatable book in that way. Where I did struggle is that the author would make 
changes, quick, abrupt changes from first person present tense to a different character, third person present tense, and then another character, past tense, third person. Like she literally hit third person and first person multiple times, but not always in the same tense. That drove me crazy. Again, I was reading as an author. Now, I think the reason that that was done was to differentiate between then and now. There was a lot of shifting back to then to show Gemma's history that tied her to the dead woman. But I didn't like the way it was done. I wish this entire book had been in first person. Just leave it there. You can even switch present and past tense. That would not have bothered me at all. What really bothered me was the tense shifting with the point of view changes. So what did that tell me? Because guess what? I'm no innocent. I've done this before. As a reader, I don't like it. So I'm going to stop doing it starting today. I will stay in the same point of view. Not, not necessarily the same person's point of view. But what I mean by that is I will always be first person. And if I use a different character, I'm going to still write about that character in first person. So from their point of view. The third person mixed with first person and then on top of it switching tenses was too much. It was like over the top, way too far. I'm surprised that it got through editing. This book is with a big six. Who is this book? Ay, ay, ay. Hatchet Book Group. I'm surprised that that got through editing. But I've seen, I want to say Sadie does this. And maybe this is a genre thing because I know there are other thrillers that do this too. And I think the reason they do it is because the narrator's not omniscient and they need the reader, the authors need the reader to know some sort of clue that the main character doesn't know and that's their way of getting it to you. But I don't like that delivery. Find another way. So that's what bothered me about this book, even though I would say it's a great book. I would still recommend this book for a debut. I mean, I couldn't have done it. So, you know, I'm not not saying, I'm not knocking this book at all. I think it was a great book. Again, I was in love with their characters. I cannot stress that enough. Um, I didn't particularly like the protagonist. I thought she was cold. I mean, I understand why. I thought she was um, a horrible mother. I did not think she was a great mom. And I felt really bad for her partner. However, I think she was real and I love that. Uh, everyone knows this person as well. So because the people were so relatable, I felt instantly connected to them. And while I wasn't particularly cheering the protagonist on because I didn't find her that wonderful, I certainly wanted to know what happened to Rose because I did care about Rose, that mystery girl who I think by using her as the dead girl, it kept me interested. Um, I read this book in three days, which for me is really fast. I'm an incredibly slow reader. Um, I will reread chapters. I think you should check it out. The Dark Lake. Um, I would love to know if you've read this. I would love to know if the changes in point of view and all that bothered you too, or if that's just Aaron being picky. Um, I'm, gl I'm glad I read this. I'm thankful that I read this because Again, I've been trying really hard to put myself in reader's shoes lately because I'm really trying to figure out what I'm doing with my writing life, what I'm doing with my life, period. <laughs> and it's important that I see it from their point of view um, because I want my readers to be happy. At the same time, I need to be happy. So yeah, we'll all get there together somehow, some way. All right, guys, have a great day. I hope you're doing well. Please hit that like button. It helps me tremendously. I will talk to you soon. Until next time, peace, love, books, and crazy.